Welcome to TNB Talk, talk Books. Books. Today we're going to talk about um, one of my favorite writers, Jeff Dyer. And one of my new favorite writers, <laughs> Jeff Dyer. <laughs> Yay. Um, this is the second book I read by Jeff Dyer. I read The Color of Memory oh, and then read? I read this. Uh -huh. But I read Color of Memory like ages ago yeah. and I liked it, but I didn't really know him. So it was like one of those things where you're like, oh, that's really awesome. I just picked this up and this is really good. But then when Trina told me to read this, I was like, oh yeah, he is really awesome. He yeah. is really awesome. He's great. And it's interesting because his books categorizing what he writes, he writes about what he finds passion in, whether yeah. it's photography, jazz music, art. travel, art, and lots of them are nonfiction, and this one happens to be fiction, although it seems uh, loosely veiled fiction, maybe. Yes, <laughs> and I mean, he does say at the end of it in yeah. his afterward that it's like, no, no, this is not me and all that stuff, but of course you're going to bring, s some yeah. of it must be him in some way or another, right? Um, and it's written in two parts. Yeah, which is kind of interesting. Death in Venice is the first part, and Death in Veronese is the second part. And now Veronese. Veronese, sorry. Yeah, no, I just Veranasi. yeah, Veronese. Yes, that's what I thought it was. I'm sorry, just like, I just I can never tell stuff sometimes because so I read it too often, and then I just say <laughs> what it comes to my mind. <laughs> um, I think it's. I loved it. First of all. Yes. Read it. It's great. It's very, very funny. It's sexy. It's super good sex scenes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> we like that, Jeff. Hard to for find you. in a literary book. Like Yeah. And of... by a guy, too. Yeah. You know, like, no, I mean, I don't really find guys often write sex that well. No. Well, and, yeah. Like, yeah. really, I don't remember the last male author that I read that had a really good sex scene. Yeah. And uh, Jeff Dyer does. So there you go. good on you. <laughs> um, That's why I hesitated to recommend it to you. I was like, I really you liked crazy? it, and then I'm like, what's she gonna think about me? So and I, I was recommended like, this. Awesome sex scenes. That's the first thing I said to Trina. I was like, awesome sex scenes. That's great. Um, but really, really uh, amazing uh, descriptions. Mm -hmm. Very funny and sarcastic. It's yeah. a little bit of a send up of the art world. Um, because basically it takes place in Venice where they're having the big uh, art, yeah. whatever it's called, I don't yeah. even remember. Is it on your notes? Oh, the Biennale. The Biennale, yes. Biennale. And oh. it's like so, you know, full of star-studded, uh, awesome people and... Well, and it's also a bit about, it's about the city, right? Because the city itself is a character. Because yes. Venice... I love Venice. Venice personified. Even yeah. even though it's supposed, you know, which I think he does well in this book. Even though it's supposed to be a tourist trap and mm -hmm. all, all that all stuff. those yeah. um, things, which you can see in the in his reflection of how he describes the art. But even c looking at how ironic he looks at both the city and the Biennale, mm -hmm. he's completely sincere. Oh, he loves and it. Loves yeah, it at the same it. time. Which but I think he's is a, like. Also biting about it yeah. and very like sarcastic and yeah, quite hilarious yeah. about it. But but really loves it. You can tell yeah. there's this underlying like just wanting to be there, just loving it so yeah. much. Um, so plot. So the plot. He. The plot is about a character named Jeff who gets. A, he's a writer who gets a gig to go to Venice. Right write about, about the Biennale in yeah. Venice and come home and whatever publish Next and then thing. the second part is he is he you never know quite if it's the same character no you the don't the second part you but assume yeah because they're both jeff and it's a novel <laughs> right so you think okay yeah. well here's him in venice Veranasi. and here's yeah. him in veranasi and yeah and in but, the Venice part, you know, you the, care, the, the love interest mm -hmm. talks about her travels in to Veronese. Veronese. And that so she's going to yeah. go there. And there, that, so the first part is like this amazing love affair that happens unexpectedly to yeah. this guy, right? And so you kind of get all, like he does, all caught up all in the it. <laughs> and then, you know, you realize at the end of that section that it might not go on, yeah. right? So it just kind of ends in a nice way and not a tragic way or anything. Yeah. But then all of a sudden you're with, you assume, this man in Veronese. 
and you don't know why. Yeah. You really don't know and why. And it's interesting because you kind of spend your time in Varanasi a little bit in the back of your mind. You're waiting for her to appear, her to appear right? and see what happens. But, but no, this other thing happens yeah. where he gets basically totally drawn into the culture and kind of yeah, kind of a lonely planet-ish version of the culture which I think is kind of interesting well I don't know if it is a lonely planet version because it said everybody takes what they want out of where they go yeah and that's true it's true that India is very tourist trappy yeah in a lot of ways yeah. like you, you have to be careful I mean I but my massage therapist was telling me about it the other day, about how she felt she had to really be on guard when she was in India yeah. because of... Well, and I think it's interesting everything. because like, when, you're, when you're traveling in a foreign country, there's always that, I don't know if it's a fear or an inclination, to something that's so different from your mm -hmm. own you sometimes give it more meaning because it's different mm -hmm. and you can lose yourself in it. Well, and, and India, I mean, is yeah. the prime example exactly. of people wanting to lose themselves in, in yeah. a lot of they ways, go there right? For, for the enlightenment or for, yeah. you know, and Varanasi is all, always, it's about death, basically, yeah. that city it's where in particular. The, it's where all the pyres are and all the, you know, It's where the Indian people go to, have, to die because they're closer to yes. their walk across to the yeah. other world. So, yeah. But it quickly sinks into this kind of strange atmosphere of um, him losing himself in a lot of yeah, ways. You know, very he's, much so. He's he loses his sense of why he's there really in the first place, and yeah. kind of um, uh, all of his like travel acquaintances that he meets during this time start like they don't know him very well, but they start kind of expressing their concern about him which tells you how deeply he's gone into his, this It's interesting because all those place. affectations that he's talking about in Venice all slowly become stripped away yeah, from him exactly. until he becomes sort some of... Some sort of shell of yeah, himself. Or the, or the inner part, not the shell, the core. The core. Although, himself. you know, core in a empty kind of way. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's the thing. It is kind of a shell in a way, right? Yeah. Because uh, what are we but all those affectations that yeah. we make of ourselves, exactly. right? So when the, all that's stripped away, he just becomes this kind of crazy philosophizing guy. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I loved I loved his description of. So he's in Varanasi. He's walking along the street, and a cow swishes his tail, and he gets um, cowdered in his mouth, and yeah. he has oh. that moment of panic. Which, as a traveler, you can have. You know, you open your mouth in the shower, or you brush your teeth and you yeah. forget. And he has that moment of panic of what's this going to mean. And then, of course, the traveler's tummy sets in. And as that, as his basic core dignity is stripped away from him, so becomes. So does everything else, yeah. basically. And, you know, who knows what comes first or Okay, second, so we're not making this part, last part very, <laughs> um, like, oh, read it. But it is... I think it's the best part it, of the book. It's so awesome yeah. to go through this journey where this character... And I, I personally think it must be the same guy. I mean, I don't yeah. see any point to, to it being anything anybody else. And I think it's interesting that he chose not to kind of... Uh, focus on the name of the guy in the second part or anything like that so that you kind of get this feeling that he's losing he's losing himself yeah you know and 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 that happens gradually until you get to the end of the second part yeah. so and I don't know yeah, you know what basically Jeff Dyer is a witty smart writer very who funny looks at incidences that occur in the interpersonal and intercultural mm -hmm. and shows them through this person's uh, inner monologues yeah. in the second part yeah and you start to you know you start to have feelings for the guru on the street and for yeah the, for everything for the everybody beggar who who's holding the bowl and then he says oh but they're the lucky ones because they have a bowl and these people don't have a bowl and then oh those people are, well, are the lucky, lucky ones, ones because, because they, they have, have hands and these right, people don't, don't have, have hands. hands yeah and it just goes on and on yeah. and on and he has these wonderful little paragraphs of really uh insightful, um, beautiful writing yeah. and, um, and 
I, I, anyway, it's just really, really good. Yeah. And he's a really, really great writer. And if you can catch him writing anything else in his world of writing for newspapers and magazines, you should read those yeah. too because he's really great. Yoga for is it yoga Travel for people room. who are too lazy to do, do it, it. I think is very fantastic. I loved it. So we recommend Jeff Dyer. Yay. We especially recommend this book. Yes. And um, for those of you who are thoroughly confused. It's about a guy who uses art in the beginning to talk about love and uses death in the end to talk about life. Very nicely put. Thank you. You, you wrote that down and didn't tell I me. I didn't. Uh, I love it. Um, nice. And you know, he's kind of a cutie. So uh, yeah, actually, he's really hot. So there's that too. <laughs>